Today, we're going to be making a simple stopwatch using an Arduino that is able to record time, stop, tell you the time, and reset itself so you can use it once again. In order to make this, you're going to need the following. A breadboard, an Arduino Uno R3, an LCD display, a button, a 10K potentiometer, and a bunch of cables. First, we're going to attach the LCD display to the breadboard. We're then going to connect a wire to the 5 volt pin on the Arduino and the other end to the positive rail on the breadboard. Then, we're going to connect one of the Arduino's ground pins to the negative rail on the breadboard. Next, we connect the A pin on the LCD to the positive rail. And then, we connect the K pin to the negative rail. Next, we connect the RS pin on the LCD to pin number 7 on the Arduino. After that, we connect the VSS pin to the negative rail of the breadboard. We also need to make a connection from VDD to the positive rail. Then we connect RW to the negative rail. This is followed by the E pin, which we're going to connect to pin 8 on the Arduino. Next comes the data pins, and we're going to use pins D4, 5, 6, and 7, and we're going to connect those to 9, 10, 11, and 12 on the Arduino. Next, we're going to add a potentiometer, which is basically a variable resistor. We're going to use this to adjust the contrast of the display. On the side of the potentiometer with two pins, we're going to connect one of the pins to the positive end of the breadboard. Then we're going to connect the pin right next to it to the negative end of the breadboard. Lastly, we're going to connect a wire from V0 to the last pin on the potentiometer. And we're all done hooking up the display. All that's left is to attach a button. We're simply going to connect one pin of the button to the negative rail, and then connect the other pin on the same side to pin 2 on the Arduino. And we're all done. All that's left now is to write some code. We're going to start off by using the include statement to include the D liquid crystal library. Make sure the liquid crystal library is installed on your computer. We're also going to define pin 2 on the Arduino as button, which is going to make things easier for us. And we're also going to create an int called timer mode, which we're going to set to zero. This is essentially going to serve as our way of gauging whether the timer is running or not. We're also going to create a long called start time and assign it no value at the moment. You could honestly use an int here if you'd like. Next, we're going to create a liquid crystal object called LCD using the following parameters, which are basically just the pins that are connected to the Arduino. In the setup section, we're going to start the LCD using LCD begin and use parameters 16 comma 2. Then we're just going to clear everything that's on the LCD. We're also going to set the button up as an input and print out a little message that says press to start. The first thing we're going to do in the loop section is set the cursor to column 0, row 1. Next, we're going to use this if statement right here, which is basically going to detect if the button has been pressed. If it has, we're going to set start time to something called millis. Millis is a command that lets Arduino count the number of milliseconds since the time it has started up. That value, whatever it may be, is going to get stored in start time. Then we're going to increment timer mode and then add a tiny bit of a delay. Next, we're going to use an if statement to check if timer mode is set to 1. If it is, we're going to use set cursor to set the cursor to column 0, row 1. And then we're going to print the following. What this is going to do is it's going to use the millis command and subtract the time we started the button and divide that whole thing by a thousand. That way it should output the exact number of seconds that have elapsed since you've pressed the button. Exactly what we need for a stopwatch. 
We're going to add another if statement that's going to check if timer mode is greater than one, hence if the button is pressed again. And there's going to be a bit of a delay right after. Uh, that delay is for you to be able to view the time you stopped at, and then everything else pretty much just resets the timer um, by setting timer mode back to zero. And with that, you're all done with your stopwatch. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please drop a like down below. And if you want to see more content like this, please consider subscribing.